Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Samantha Hardin, one of the members of the REAM Consortium. And here today, I am also going to be speaking with Dr. Katie Trinkley, who's going to speak to us about the development, utility, and outcomes of iPRISM. So Katie, first, can you tell us what iPRISM is, who it was developed for, and how we might use it? Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me here today. I'm very excited to talk about this. Um, so the iPRISM tool stands for Iterative, Practical, Robust Implementation and Sustainability Model. Um, and so we developed it uh, with really broad end users in mind, not just researchers, not just folks who have implementation science background. We want to appeal to them, but also folks that don't have that experience, clinicians, um, quality improvement folks and folks who bo are both English and Spanish speaking. Um, and ultimately this tool, what it does is it helps to simplify implementation science to increase the uptake of those methods and approaches. Um, and so it does that using one of the commonly used frameworks out there in the implementation science space, which is PRISM, um, so Iterative PRISM. Um, I love that this is such a broad reaching tool and that you also said this is supposed to help um, with dissemination implementation science because we do need so many tools because there's so many different um, constructs and theories and models and measures. And so sometimes, particularly, as you mentioned, folks who are less familiar, we have this chasm, this big gap between um, what we want to explore within dissemination implementation science and where our tools are. So we know this has been a long time coming. So thank you so much for all the behind the scenes work. We also know that you have a recent publication in Implementation Science Communications that talks a little bit more about iPRISM. This is available open access for those who would like to download that from the internet. And for anyone else, can you just describe a little bit more about what they might expect from that paper itself that introduces iPRISM? Certainly, absolutely. So in the paper, um, it really tries to break down not just how we created the tool, which was very, in my mind, um, pretty rigorous user-centered or human-centered design process in which we engaged really the type of people that we want to be using it. So more than 20 individuals and teams of folks who are implementing different types of projects in diverse settings. Um, so we go through that description and report out the general results, which is in general, they liked it and they wanted to use it um, and were recommending it for others to use. But we also really try to break down what this tool does and how it goes through the process of simplifying application of PRISM and um, talks about really the nuts and bolts of it, um, is, which includes the different questions that it asks you to prompt a user and guide a user through the process of applying PRISM, which includes REAIM, um, includes REAIM. I know that's very important to emphasize. Um, and um, it, so it talks about the different stages. So this tool is intended to be used really, it could be used just once during a project, but it ideally is used more than once. It's used during the pre-implementation planning stage, during the actual implementation of a project and during the sustainment or evaluation phases. And at, irrespective of which stage a user uh, indicates that they want to use it, the paper talks about how it does this. So it guides a user through the process of assessing their context and the alignment with their project, making changes to their project based on key outcomes and that alignment, um, and also really prioritizing feasible and impactful strategies or adaptations to ultimately improve impact of outcomes and the alignment. Um, and baked in throughout all of this are equity considerations in terms of representation of stakeholders, as well as representativeness of the outcomes being measured. So the paper really uh, dives in to talk about those things. It also explains how using the PRISM, web, the iPRISM web tool will help users really apply one, one of the key theories, models, or frameworks prism in a way that's systematic and consistent, especially when you, you know, you're working on a project and you need input from a lot of folks. Um, so that consistent standardized process um, is pretty important. So it really walks the user through really the, the background, the why, the motivation, and the how the web tool does what it does. 
Thank you for that. And I love the systematic and consistent. And then of course, also with iPRISM, I know you mentioned that it could be used just at one time stamp. But what I find so exciting about this tool is that it can be used over and over again. And I know you mentioned uh, really considering a variety of folks who might use it, um, but also uh, you, you kept saying user. Could you share with the audience a bit about how an individual or a team might be a user within this platform? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we set out to create this web tool, I initially thought it would be individual researchers um, who would want to use this. But what we've found is that it, really, I think the sweet spot are teams. So implementation teams or researchers partnering with different settings sites um, and needing to get input from the people on the ground or operational leaders uh, really find this tool valuable to get everyone's perspective on these important issues when it comes to pre-implementation planning, implementation and sustainment or evaluation. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, it can be used by either party. What we're finding is uh, not what I initially thought, and teams are really appreciating it. I think one of the other reasons why teams really gravitate towards it is um, that representation of perspectives, and it unveil unveils things that would previously not have been identified um, or would take a lot of time to tr try to really get at. Um, without a standard process, um, these specific assessment questions that are provided. Yeah, I love that highlight about, you know, some of the voices might not have even been heard. So a lack of representation, your piece about that standardization and ease of collecting those data. The other thing that I'm thinking about, which I maybe we'll design a study for, um, is the psychological safety that iPRISM might be able to create as well, because this tool allows people to complete it synchronously or asynchronously. And if you have any questions about how you might facilitate that iPRISM uh, on the website, you can actually reach out for some facilitation tips and tricks as well. So this is an incredible platform. And as you mentioned, um, both uh, earlier in the description, as well as the paper, very user-centered, very human com uh, computer interaction focused. Um, but to, to think about that, what, what the computer, what kind of the background can do, one of the things that some of my teams are most excited about is the data visualization piece that iPRISM provides. Can you share a little bit more with audience members about what they're going to be able to walk away from use of this tool with in terms of data visualization and any other um, kind of tools or components you'd like to share? Absolutely. And I'm going to take just a little bit of a step backwards uh, and encompass the answer to your question within it. And so the way that the web tool works is it literally breaks down stepwise how PRISM is applied. It asks some questions um, and, that, and then based on your results, it will display those results. So how well are you aligned? How well are you anticipating or have you made progress on your important outcomes? And so depending on the alignment or the progress on those outcomes, it will display in graphical visual, visual format um, really what those results are. Um, and if it is a, a team, it'll summarize those results. If it's an individual, it'll display it just for that individual. And at that moment, it then allows the user to quickly see areas of misalignment or areas where they're not making as much progress on their outcomes as they ideally want to, which then the web tool says, okay, you've reviewed these results which they can review in different visualizations, actually. We realize that that's important. Different people uh, digest information differently. Um, the web tool will then say, okay, you've seen this. What are the areas that are important to improve alignment or outcomes? And what are you going to do about it? Um, so it really walks the user through the process of addressing each of these issues. Ultimately, um, later on, it's going to then ask a user to prioritize based on feasibility and impact, which changes are most important because there's lots of things we could do, but the reality um, in this pragmatic world that we live in that PRISM tries to nurture is you can't do everything. So then it'll display based on your ratings of feasibility and impact, um, what 
areas would be best to prioritize in a scatter plot. So it really uses lots of different types of visualizations and nudging and prompting uh, process wise mm -hmm. to get a user to um, get to where they want to be. Yeah, I mean, I'm so excited because it's such a inner and transdisciplinary approach so that we can do data informed decision making across so many fields and teams. So we know that it has a lot of potential. And since it's just launched, can you share a little bit about who's using it and whether or not it's working, any feedback you're getting kind of real time? Yeah, so we're really excited. Um, so the tool has been live for less than a year now um, and publicly available. Um, as of July of 2023, uh, the tool has been accessed uh, close to 3,000 times. Um, used in almost all of the states, so 48 states, and used in more than 30 countries um, for really diverse types of projects, both in the public health and also the healthcare setting, in English and Spanish, which we're excited about, um, examples of projects. So there's a global sepsis deterioration program that it's being used for in the Spanish version. Um, it's also being used uh, for to support total worker health occupational safety uh, in Spanish, um, but then also for in healthcare setting um, and, and English as well. Yeah, so incredible potential for this platform and tool. Is there anything else you think folks need to know before they head over and bring it up in their next grant or um, with their next team meeting? Um, in terms of getting started, we have getting started guides, and those are really based on uh, real live feedback and experience uh, of using the web tool. So I really urge folks, if you want to use the tool, click on those getting started guides. Uh, they include some really valuable pearls to make your experience as good and smooth and efficient as possible. Yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. It's not like you have to be an expert from the start. There is a specific place to help you um, build your confidence and competence with the platform. And I'd also like to um, really echo what Katie said earlier about um, PRISM includes re-aim outcomes. So unsurprisingly, our re-aim.org website will be um, linking to and partnering with the iPRISM tool so that you can continue to see how it fits together, use some of our grantsmanship resources and other data visualizations and um, design considerations and all sorts of things. So please do um, continue to keep in touch with both platforms so that you can see how they're really working together um, to help you feel more confident in dissemination implementation science and with PRISM in particular. And with that, is there any final uh, thoughts? Because that getting started uh, guide was really helpful to hear about. I didn't know about that yet. So thank you for sharing that with me and the audience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about this process or this tool? I'll just say we're really excited to get it out there and we love feedback. There's an opportunity at the end of it to provide feedback. It is incredibly valuable to us. Um, we're constantly making improvements. So please click on the link and give us feedback so we can make it better for everyone. Absolutely. Let's continue the process. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. And I hope that all of you have an opportunity to visit prismtool.org as well as re-aim.org and find a slew of resources that will help you help others. Thanks for joining.